praying this morning. First Kings chapter four, verse twenty-nine. First Kings chapter four, verse twenty-nine. Let's read together. One to go, and God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much, and the largeness of heart even as the sand that is on the seashore. When the Bible says God gave Solomon that, that talks about capacity. This is what you want to pray. Father, increase my capacity. Are you ready, somebody? Everybody to pray right and say, my father, my father. Here, my, here I am. Increase my capacity for the next phase. Let not my capacity be the limits of my testimonies. Rather, increase my capacity for the next phase. Let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and pray. Oh, yes, Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray. Sabane kora tilegete shenema. Empate ke sobro koto brege de zizelete. Empe no kupara ne shapa telegete ya. That's our prayer this morning. That our capacity will be increased. That our capacity will be increased. Oh God. Shele ma sobro koto no. Empo se negede. Empo ne mo sobo no mo neke pataya. That our capacity be increased, oh God, oh God. Our risk capacity, financial capacity, relational capacity, oh God, it will be increased in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's our prayer this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we just thank you. We give you praise. Lord, we're asking you that do what only you can do. We're praying that you inspire hope in people today. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, you can have your seat. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when Max, when Max was singing, I was so blessed. I just didn't even feel like preaching again. You know. God, I was just checking because I just, she just kept going and, you know. Hallelujah. Wow. Let's make some, some announcement. So firstly, fasting and praying starts tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Fasting and praying starts tomorrow. Glory to God. And um, I'm believing God for a time of spiritual renewal. I'm believing God. So why, why do I fast? It's every time you fast, you want a miracle. Sometimes you just want to spend time with God. Just want to get per perception from his own side. The second thing that happens is this. Fasting is a time of receiving instructions. There are things you're praying about that will not change except you hear something new. So it's a time of what? Receiving instructions. So there will be great miracles. I know that as we fast and pray, people that have been delayed when it comes to marriage, it will be sorted out. I know as we fast and pray, I know that people that have been praying, praying for some kind of financial breakthrough, it will happen because fasting amplifies everything. So I hope you... You know, maybe I should get a microphone. Can you get a microphone? Let me get two or three people to share their expectation for me during this fasting period. I know we've watched the video already, you know. I, I don't know who, who, who I'm going to call. Sister, uh, uh, what's her name now? Nene. Nene, yes, Nene, come. Come and tell me what your expectation is yeah, during this period. Yes, Bataro, come. Come, come. Yeah, tell me what your expectation during this period is. Good morning, sir. Good morning, church. Good morning. So my expectation for this year's fast is clear cut direction, clarity. I need fresh clarity for my ministry. I need fresh clarity for my career and purpose and for my marital destiny. Amen. That's Amen. wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank yes, I'm, I love what I'm hearing. Praise yes, the Lord. Um, I'm believing God to me. Increase my capacity. Increase your capacity. capacity yes. What do you think will happen to people as they fast and they pray? 
Okay, so um, I got, they'll just be very sensitive to God. Praise God. And they will hear God for a clear cut direction. Amen. Pastor, whilst I was sitting there and a scripture came to mind, you know, and it says in Jeremiah 32 verse 27, it said, I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to Praise do? Praise God. So most people think in Nigeria that nothing comes easy. But God is saying, is there anything too hard Praise for God. me to do? So receive your plans in Jesus' pa Pastor name. George, will you come, come, come tell us? Come tell us, come tell us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, that, that, what, what, is going to, what is going to happen to you? Not to you as me a person. Personally, yes, what's going to happen? You my, first. My biggest testimony this year is coming. Hey. My biggest testimony yet. Your we biggest? Are well, part of it. Yes. Yes. The testimony so, is sure this year. So, the biggest testimony of your life is coming this year yes, so sir. far. Yes, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. What's, what do you think is going to happen to people as they hear? Yeah. No, they're going to have encounters with God's word. God's word is going to change your mind. It's going to influence the way you think. It's going to influence your actions and it's going to change and radically change your results. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. you. God bless you. Please, hallelujah. Everybody should have gotten this on your seat. This is our fasting and praying guide. It's, um, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. And if anybody tries to sell it to you, it's free. You should not pay for it. Just report that it's free. If you don't have one on your seat, tell the ushers that you're lacking a fasting and praying guide. They will give you one. And it's also downloadable. So we're going to post a link where it's downloadable. And you're, going to, you're, going to, you're just going to see there. Hallelujah. So if you don't have one, just raise up your hands and I want us to... Ushers, can you help me circulate more of the... More, just raise up your hands. So I'm just taking my time. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Just taking my time and I, I want everyone to have one. If someone doesn't have one, who, who was raising up? Do you have one now? Okay. So check the seat pocket in front of you. Sometimes it's in the seat pocket in front of you. Glory to God. So just raise up your hands. The ushers, please help me. There, there are people on my left. I just want everybody to get one. So remember, we're fasting from tomorrow. So um, put up the handles. Remember, tomorrow there's no physical gathering, but Tuesday there's a physical gathering. And Wednesday, there's prayer next level in the morning and evening service. And Wednesday is communion service in the morning. Hallelujah. So the way you join the prayer is really by following next level. And I've asked to you that you should get 10 persons to join with you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've asked that 10 persons should join with you. Glory to God. I'm just waiting for them to circulate. And we will do that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't have, those are the ushers moving around and they're going to, in the extensions, if you don't have, um, on the overflows, please let them just come to you and be able to do that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that's really good. Amen. So we're going to be really, really blessed. And uh, yeah, we're going to be really, really blessed. All right. So yes, let's... Um, if anyway I teach up to, if I feel like we should worship, then we'll just go ahead and do it. And we'll just come back and, uh, you know, we just do what we have to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Does everybody have a copy right now? So remember, everybody is fasting. Everyone, say, say with me, everyone is fasting. From tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Good. So, so we just want to let you know. And we're praying every day. We pray every day in the morning. So there's also category um, prayers in category. 1 p.m. tomorrow, um, this week, we'll be praying for those that have relationship, um, that praying about their relationship and marriage. 1 p.m. will be there. 1 p.m. there'll be 10 minutes prayer in the afternoon and there'll be an 8 p.m. prayer. The upper week is for those that have want to pray about career and finances. And the last week is about those that want to pray for healing and the fruit of the womb. Praise the Lord. And please remember that we have our wine press conference coming up. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We have and I love what Pastor George says. It is the biggest, this is our biggest wine press so far. Praise the Lord. Yes. Just imagine the array of speakers. You know, last year, Ashley and Carly joined us by video. This year, they are live. Praise the Lord. I don't know if you've seen them on, is it TV and on Faith TV? They are always there every day. Which one is it? It's TBN. They're always there. Ashley and Carly are joining us. Reverend George is right there. Apostle Trisha Selma will be there. Um, Apostle Arome. He's the one who opened the conference. Sunday, he's going to preach. Praise the Lord. Um, then, Dosio Yeko is there. Then, my lovely wife is there. And I'm there also. Praise the Lord. So, it's going to be really good. I I'm telling you because everybody must listen. We want the whole world. We don't want to do one conference in the corner. We want to pack. We, we, you know when they say, they, they say there's a whiskey show? We, we are doing more than a whiskey show. Everywhere must block. They say, What's happening? Jesus is happening. We say, What well, Jesus is happening? 
How can the biggest, how, how, can, how can concert be causing traffic when gospel has not caused traffic? Hallelujah. Praise God. You should take it as a personal mandate and say, I'm the evangelist in my office. Everybody must come. Amen. On your street, in your estate, you go not from door to door. Everybody must come. Praise the Lord. And the good thing is this. When you seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness, all these other things shall what? Be added unto you. So you must do that. Amen? So put the word on your social media. Begin to put the videos there. Begin to share the flowers with your friend and make sure that they come. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. All right. Let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 15 in verse 16. John chapter 15 in verse 16. He said, okay, let me just say, so someone said, when can we break our fast? You can break your fast from two. You know, for those, at least from that, for those that, because it's a 21 day fast, you know, let some people just be like, oh wow, I've collapsed already. You know, (laughs) so from two. Now, some of you can do better than that. You know, then you do better than that. Praise the Lord. And every week we're going to have a memory verse. I'm going to release it tomorrow. You know, the, the memory verse for this week is Mark 9.23. All things are possible to him that what? Hallelujah. Believe it. So I just wanted to meditate upon it every, every day. Amen. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. So the Bible says this in John chapter 15 verse 16. I want to read from the message verse translation. So this... This morning, I'm talking about how the Spirit of God grows us and helps us to have tangible results. So, this is what the Bible says in John chapter 15, verse 16. It says, you did not choose me. I chose you and put you in this world to bear fruits. It's amazing. God says, hey, I chose you to bear fruits. Progress was not your idea. It was God's design for you. He said, you thought that, hey, I want to do well. God says, the reason why you're thinking that way was because I put the thoughts inside you. And it's amazing because when God says, I want you to do something, then God, because he's responsible, creates the enabling environment and ability for that thing to be done. Glory to God. He says, you didn't choose me. He said, I chose you. And put you in this world that you bear fruit. Look at what he called you. He says, as fruit bearers. Ah! (laughs) Hey! Look at my... See, you know, many of you don't know your names. They call you Blackie. Your friends call you Ziggy. What's Ziggy? Some of them say Tolly. What's Tolly? Some of them yellow purple. Is that a name? Those are not names. Those are descriptions. God tells you... And listen, nobody can name you like your creator. He's looked at you. He says what? Where where, where am I? He says, as what? Fruit bearers. Say, I'm a fruit bearer. bearer. So what does that mean? Let me tell you what that means. This is what the Bible says. It says, he is the vine and where the branches. Have you seen vine and branches before? Vine is that, uh, it's a trunk. It's that big thing in the tree. The branches are by the side. Fruits don't appear on the vine. They appear on the branches. God says, I chose where my fruit to be. It will not be on me to be on you. Are you hearing me? I say, are you hearing me? Call yourself with yourself a fruit bearer. I always produce results. Say, I'm the fruit bearer. I always produce results. All things are possible to me. Someone say, hallelujah. That's it. All things are possible to me. Yes, I'm a fruit bearer. Yes, if I do real estate, I bear fruits. Yes, if I do oil and gas, I bear fruits. Yes, if I do entertainment, I bear fruits. Yes, if I do crypto, I bear fruits. Yes, Why? I'm a fruit bearer. See, it's not what I'm praying to, it's who I am. Yes, I bear fruit. I was designed that way. Yes, when you buy an iPhone, you say, Can he talk? It's not about can he talk. It was designed as a phone. When God was building me, he designed me to produce fruits. So I don't know how this year will go. It will be a year of producing fruits. 
Are you here, somebody? Yes, sir. It doesn't matter what you do, you're a fruit bearer. If you sell pure water, it sells. If it's granite, it's selling. They wonder, you're a millionaire from granite. How? Because I'm a fruit bearer. If I'm a woman, I have children. If I'm a man, I have children. Why? I'm a fruit bearer. He says, <laughs> he says, I'm putting this all to bear fruit. Fruits that won't spoil. <laughs> we are not the one that started that to scatter. No. Our, our peace are sustained. They are preserved. He said, as fruit bearers, whatsoever you ask the Father in relation to me, he gives to you. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, I am blessed. Very powerful. So, so the question now is this. God wants us to really grow. God wants us to do well. But how does the spirit, because this is what I want to teach you. How does the spirit of God help us grow? Does the spirit of God has a part to play in it? How does the spirit of God help us grow? Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. So, I'm running the, I'm doing a business of a hundred million per annum. And I want to scale to 150 million or 200. How does the Spirit of God take me from this 100 million to 200 million? Philippians 2, verse 13. Philippians 2, verse 13. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. Isn't that okay? So, the Bible says this. For it is God that what? Works in you. Both to what? Will. And to what? Do. <laughs> this is what I want to show you. Every time God wants to move you up, you know what God does? God comes on the inside of you to begin to move you. How does that do that practically? Let me give you an example. Let me show you something. Hebrews at a level. Let, let's, just, let, let's just look at that quickly. Let's just look at that. Hebrews 11, verse 24. Hebrews 11, verse 24. Oh, wow. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Hebrews 11, verse 24. The Bible says this. <clears throat> verse 25. Maybe verse 24. Verse 24. By faith, when Moses was come to years, was come to maturity, he refused to be called the sons of Pharaoh's daughter, ra choosing rather to suffer afflictions with the people of God than to esteem the pleasures of sin for a season. Hey, what does that mean? What does that mean? How does God really move us to the next level? I've said to you, number one, that God begins to walk in us. This is how God changes our level. This is how, what he does. God, when he wants to change your level, begins to create within you a dissatisfaction and a discontent for where you are. That's what happens. See, it's so natural, you will not even realize that God is at work. But you will just feel a discontent. You will, you will go back to that deal. You always get all the steel of 5 million, 7.2, 4.5, and now you got 7.5. And your secretary is thinking you're excited. You're like, I'm just tired of all these deals. And it's not the tiredness of not being grateful. It's the tiredness of saying, I know there is more. And the reason why you know there's more is because there's a staring on your inside. Because God has begun to walk in you. The Bible says, for a long time, Moses was okay. They will call him Pharaoh's son. He said, yes, I'm Pharaoh's son, Pharaoh's son. At a point, he said, don't say that again. Why? He had come to maturity. The spirit had worked within him. I'm telling you, it, it just gets a time that you just find out what you used to tolerate. You refuse to tolerate it again. Yes. And what the spirit does at that moment, that he create the spirit does something. He insignificantly, the spirit creates an hunger for something deeper, for something stronger, for something more than what you have experienced before. The spirit opens your eyes and shows you possibilities of what can be. That's what the spirit does. So, you, you, you just say something like, you know, I, 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 it just gives you this hunger. 
You know why it gives you this hunger? Because, see, God blesses you with hunger because hunger makes you uncomfortable in comfort. Hunger makes you what? Uncomfortable in comfort. The reason why is this. Because growth comes out of your... What, growth happens in what? In out of your comfort zone. Growth happens what? Out of your comfort zone. So what God does, he gives you hunger so that you can step out of your comfort zone. Let me tell you something. Some people never fast and pray. You know, why don't you fast and pray? Uh, I don't know how to pray. See, you don't fast and pray because you have not found the reason to fast and pray. When you find a reason to pray, you will pray like a mad dog. Have you seen the heart? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, who knows how to pray? He's something that taught us to pray. I've seen people that say they can't fast. By the time they got to 38 and they were not married. Mm. I, I just saw, you know, because I'm like, oh, Pastor B, you know, you know, I'm going to Peru. When I go to Peru, I go to London because. I'm even tired. I'm just stressed. Lagos is stressing me. You know, my first time praying, possibly, you know, I'm not into all this kind of thing. I just come to church. I love praise and worship. That's all I love. But by the time they get to 39 and a half, I just said to the next level, I just saw them. Oh, Rabba. I said, ah, Rabba. Ah. Ah, 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 Rabba. They found a reason to pray. All these politicians on radio and television, TV election is coming. Watch them. They will start. They will start knowing church. Yes. <laughs> they will be in that everywhere they are collecting prayer. Anywhere they say, neither they say we need now. Neither they say we need now. Neither they say we need now. You see, it's not as if you don't know how to pray. You have not found the reason to pray. They say men don't pray. Men have not found the reason to pray. Let them find contracts. That they say. They say we've given you the contract for three point five million dollars, and a day after they say someone took it. Ah, you will see. Is it? Ah, this is another man very powerful spiritual. Is it, is it powerful spiritual? Me to have a pastor. <laughs> man of God. That's the reason why. So, when God wants to change the level, what God really does, He's a, He puts through His Spirit, He puts a discontent within you. Everybody have been telling you that ah, to get married, you have to be this way, this way. It, ah! But when it's time, by yourself, you will come to the conclusion that I have to change. You, you will think this, you will think it's you. It's not really you. It's but the reason why you don't know is that when God does it, it's not as if he speaks to you. He says it's God that works, it's like an engine. He will just work it within you. The desires will be from within. Hallelujah. The desires will be from within. He will just look and say, What is terminal every month? What will I do with this? But this was the same terminal you saw oppress everybody in church. But now. The spirit is saying it's too small. Hey, hey. He's saying it's too small. He's saying it's too small. Someone asked Pastor, how do you know if I'm, mar- if I'm ready for marriage? If I, how I will know? It's now I will know. When you're ready, the engine will talk. Why? It's God that walks in you. Go to will. Hallelujah. You will just know that ah, this house is just empty. Nobody's here. But this was the same house been for three years. You never complained it was lonely. Why is it not empty now? The spirit is not willing. Glory to God. You, you run a business. You've always had this nice shop. You have one in Nikoi. You have one in Naja. You have one in Leki. And all of a sudden, you say, How come I can't go outside Nigeria? Why are you thinking that way? Because the spirit is not becoming what? When he's tearing. What? The spirit is tearing you up. It's like a generator. He's propelling you from the inside. If you don't know, you will not recognize that that's the spirit. Because it comes in a subtle way. And you know what the God does? He will not tell you to do this. He will just put this, you, you will just have this hunger, this desire, this discontent. Some of you are here. The voice will just say, it's time to go to cell, become a cell leader. You ignore it. I want to ask you, when a voice says, serve God, give to God, can it be the voice of Satan? Then who is talking to you? It's the Holy Ghost, but you missed it. That voice that says, join the workforce, it was the Holy Ghost talking, but you didn't know. This year now, as we are planning, he's begun to deal with you about your prayer life. Oh, let me talk. Let's take it deeper. 
have you tried to pray before and you plan our prayer for 15 minutes and when 15 minutes is gone as you want to leave the prayer it's as if someone is pulling you back how I many knows what I'm talking about it's as if someone is pulling you back and you're like no 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 no, I'm going to the office and it's supposed to go in my tab, tab, tab. The, you're praying but the prayer is not leaving you why the spirit has taken over He's pulling you. There's something he wants to do. He's pulling you. There's something he wants. He's pulling you. There's something we want to do. The spirit is working. Philippians 2.13 For it is God that works in us. Question. How does the spirit grow you? See, let me tell you. If you're very smart, the spirit is very powerful. Without you knowing, it will be paying for the future. Because he knows the future. But how does this start? It's a desire. It's that desire you have to respond to. What I'm teaching you today is this. The way the spirit grows you is by putting a desire in you. And what you have to do is to respond to what? That desire. Ah. 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 This thing happens to me in prayer. I want to pray. I just say, okay, let me just pray. But before you know it, 10 minutes goes to 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And, and, and sometimes, it's because the spirit needs some things to be settled. I don't know businessmen here. It's really just put in your mind. Why not go there? And you can do that. And you don't realize that that's the opportunity for you to grow. He like, eh, that contract of this amount, who do I know? He didn't say, what do you know? But who put his hand there? The spirit. The more you walk with the spirit, the more you will expand. I'm telling you, the more you, because the spirit is all wise. This, this is what you rather see. But a judge come. Pastor, judge come, please. This is what you see. I want you to watch this. Face me. This is the flesh, this is the spirit. I'm the spirit, this is the flesh. You can tell. Praise God. Guess what? This is the spirit. Oh, he wants to have it. Block me. Make sure I don't go anywhere as I move. The spirit wants to have his way because he's willing. He, he wants to have his way. As he wants to have, he wants to touch your finance, you hold him. He wants to touch your manager, you hold him. He said, let me touch your business, you hold him. And, this, and God is saying, let me move. And before you know, you and the spirit, you start, you start, you start, you start, you know, and the spirit does not, does not fight. He said, if you don't want, let it be. May God not hands off his hand off your, off your case. I'm telling you. That's how many of you in relationship. God says, let me walk in your relationship. He says, let me walk. He says, no, don't walk. He says, let's talk about this. Don't this word. Leave this word. Let's talk. Once your heart is broken, you now come. Like someone that's weaved on himself. <laughs> because when you were dating the guy, you will not come to church on weekend. He said, oh, no, no, pastor, I slept in Akman's place. You were always in Akman's place. Akman, Akman, Akman. You have not yet Pam. Praise God. <laughs> Now you are pam. Now you go to his house because you thought you have seen bus stop. You just saw his engaged girlfriend. He said, What was this? He said, I thought she knew we were playing. He said, Playing? With what? Am I a toy? <laughs> After that Sunday, you now come to church. You are there first service, second service, third service, fourth service. <laughs> Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something. Father, mercy, mercy. I know I forsook you. It's a spirit that works in us, but to will. Question. The area you've set the goal, what is the spirit working on? Because it's useless to walk on what the spirit is not working on. Thank you, sir. So, as a businessman, you're just thinking and the thing will just say, okay, you know what? Why not go to this company and start, a, start an Abuja center? You wonder, why should I do that? Because the spirit is willing. But the thing is that it comes, so, it comes in a so subtle way that you may miss it and not know that it's a spirit. Let me show you one scripture. Are you there? Let's read. Act of the 17, verse 16. Act 17, verse 16. Excuse me. And this thing is very, very... See, 
This thing I'm telling you is a very simple thing. Sometimes when you're worshiping, you will just hear, you will feel like raising up your hands. The Spirit is moving you. Raise it up. See, I don't even know why he does that. I just said, thank you, Jesus. As we are preaching right now, you feel like something you, you want to scream. See, the thing is not about screaming. You are just training yourself to resist Holy Spirit. So much so that in bigger things, you will resist him. Because it's not your what? Auto. Have you noticed when you use computers, when you use a function often, it will ask you, should you use this once or always? After using it after some time, it will stop asking you to use that function or not. Yes or, yes or no? That, oh my God. Let me relax and say it again. Have you noticed when you use a computer, when you start using the function, it will ask, should I use this application or use others? And once you choose it, after you use it several times, it will stop asking you because the application will become default. That's the problem with resisting the spirit in small things. Because you've resisted him, your default is not resistance. When the big thing comes, you just resist him. You will never do it consciously. Your default has taken over. And many of you are training yourself in the world of resistance. Act chapter 17, verse 16. See what the Bible says. And why Paul waited at Athens? This was like a transit flight. He was not going to Athens, he was going to another city. But they had to stop in Athens, like transit, bus stop. Bible says, and his spirit was dead. How was his spirit dead? His spirit. The reason why his spirit was dead was because he gave himself to the staring. His spirit was dead. And when his spirit was dead, what happened next? The Bible says he saw. Listen, you will not see until you pay attention to the staring. As a businessman, you will not see the opportunity until you pay attention to what the spirit is staring. So the spirit will just say, um, and, and let me give a practical example. We'll just say, the son I've not been talking to in about three or four years. Last year. The Holy Ghost began to worry me. He said, go and talk to him. He said, go and talk to him. And the guy is quite snobbish. He's not someone that is very friendly. He can just, you will text him, you will take two days. I'm like, what, what do you want from me? <laughs> but I'm not wiser than the Holy Ghost. Is that not true? We have to connect. I met one of our very close church members, very, very one of our old church members. And one day he just came and he said, invited the boss to church. Young guy, the boss. And the spirit said, that's a friend for you. So you know you call, you never know. So you, too, you want to be like, I want to feel as if I have said respect now. How can me, man of God, call you? You now know this one. For what? Just born. And the Spirit will not tell you that. Who did I say to make the effort? Him or you? I say it's me. He said, why are you looking at the response? Your obedience is not in response to his action. It's in response to him. And I said, Lord, I didn't know that one. And we became friends. All of a sudden, he flipped. Is that the one that calls me? And the kind of doors this guy has now opened. When I met him, I never even thought he had the capacity, capability, intelligence to open that door. Praise God. I know people that God will tell them, be kind to you, the person you sit down next to church. And they were kind to the person, and the person became their wife. And it was just staring. Just staring. The Bible says, his spirit was dead and he saw. It was when he gave himself to the staring that began to say. So how does the spirit of God help you? The spirit of God begins to put desires, hunger within you. Hoping that as you respond, those things will what? Expand you. How does he do that? The first thing he does is that. So, so the spirit puts hunger. Why? Hunger makes us, comf hunger makes us uncomfortable. And the reason, you, like, and this is the reason why people don't respond to the prompt of the Holy Spirit because it pulls this hunger, and this hunger makes them uncomfortable. What they don't realize is this: that growth happens outside comfort zones. You didn't hear what I said? Growth happens outside what comfort? How many of you have God put in your mind to serve in church and not serve in church? How many of you has God put in your mind to attend a Bible course and not attend a Bible course? How many of you has God put in your mind to start a new business and not started it? 
How many of you have got dealt to your mind? I said, this one start tight to your boss. Tight, started. And the reason why you don't do that because growth happens in what? Growth happens outside comfort zone. So it's naturally uncomfortable for you. And God says, that's it. So every time God is pushing you outside your comfort zone, he's pushing you to a growth zone. Many of you are here. God has told you to do crypto. Yes, he's saying that. I don't know what it means. My brother, humble and do crypto. He said, I'm an old man. You are too young. I'm telling you, God. And God will just speak to you in that simple way. You'll be surprised you do it for three months. And all you make in a year, you make in three months. I'm a, you know, I mean, I mean this. You'll be making your head so head big for the Holy Ghost. It wants to touch your finances. You say no. Praise God. That's weak. Praise God. Uh, let the Lord use your mouth now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What the powerful thing is that when God gives you hunger, you see differently. Eh? When God gives you hunger, you see differently. Because hunger makes you see. The way a hungry man and a full man see are very different. So God, God uses the spirit to put this huge hunger in your spirit. How does that God do that? Number one, number one, by revelation. God gives you revelation. Look, look at this. Luke 24 verse 45. Let's go there quickly. I'm going to read two scriptures. Luke 24 45. Galatians 2 2. Luke 24 verse 45. See what the Holy Ghost does. This is how the Holy Ghost changes everything. See, see, let's read one to go. The Bible says, then Jesus opened their understanding. Then they understood what scripture. See, the way the Holy Ghost talks says, I want the Holy Ghost to really grow me. How does he grow you? This is, how, this is what you have to do. The more you get into the word, the more the Holy Ghost grows you. You know why? As you get into the word, it will open your understanding. It will make you see something you have never seen before. Ah! That's, I'm, oh my God. God, this is so powerful. There's a woman that was, was dripping blood for 12 years. I don't know how she did it, but the moment she heard, there was a revelation she had that Jesus could heal. Instantly, our hope stood up. Uh, there's a way you read the Bible that fire will come out of it. Fire! Fire will come out of it. It will be as if they wrote your name inside. Nobody believes in your family. Nobody looks up to you. You are downcasted. You read Saul like David. David was, a, was at the back side of the family. Even his father did not believe in him. They said, let's use him as a houseboy. A prophet came and said, call all your sons. His father called all the sons and forgot he had David. He told somebody, all oh, my sons are here. Uh, someone said, the Spirit of God said, the one son is not here. He said, no, 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 that's not his son, no. That's a useless boy. And someone told him, he said, we will not sit down. Hey. That, you know why he said we will not sit down? That means that he was not even in the haste to call him. He said, we will not sit down. When you read that and you are the one they look down on your family, and they say nothing can happen to you, when you read that kind of scripture, fire jumps out that if God did for David, he would do for me. Are you here, somebody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you read about Ruth, she was not single, she was widowed. And yet, as a widow, God gave her a nice and fantastic husband called Boaz. She was not even a Jew. She was a non-Jew. God even told them, don't marry non-Jews. But for her, God made an exception. When you see what God did, and you are single, you say, my God, if God can do for Ruth, he will do mine also. Those are the ways that God creates hunger within you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But you see the story of Sarah. And that's why during wine press, you must be here with your notes. Because it's revelation, 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 revelation. Why? That's what God uses to expand you. 
If you don't know what the Bible calls, it's getting through the Bible class. It's not for Bible knowledge. The reason why you study Bible is not for knowledge. We study for transformation. Why? Every revelation leads to revolution. Every what? Revelation leads to what? Revolution. Every revelation leads to what? Revolution. Why do you study scriptures? Because scriptures are pictures of our future. Because scriptures are what? Pictures of our future. Scriptures are pictures of our future. Scriptures are pictures of our future. It's not just a book. It's life. Say amen, somebody. The power of Bible is not put under a pillow. No. There's no power in Bible under a pillow. The power of Bible is put it on the inside. He said, the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Shakala manto kabaya. Ekura mata. Kariku tenekete. Ekura te kasko bragada. Data. Hey. Stop playing church. Go for the word. Don't play church. Go for the word. When life comes, you don't say, I have not have a You will say, the Bible says. Yes. You say, the Bible says. It is written. Hey. Hey. Somebody say, amen. Hey. Your fear level is a reflection of your emptiness. Your fear level is a reflection of what you're emptying. What's never text like? Hey, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my. I don't like darkness. Why are you afraid? Because you don't know who you are. The first thing is revelation. The second thing is... <laughs> Hallelujah. The second thing. House of the Spirit. So, as you study the Bible, the ba- God uses revelation to expand you. Let me show you what the Bible says here. Galatians 2.2. Put it on the scripture. On the screen, please. Look at the power of revelation. Look at, but just, just one line though. Paul says, I what? Went up by what? How did Paul go up? By revelation. How do you go up financially? By revelation. How do you go up maritally? By revelation. How do you go up financially? Revelation. How do you go up your business? Revelation. Paul says, I went up. I went up by revelation. It was revelation that made me fly. You'll be playing with Bible study, you're playing with fire. Paul said, hey, everything you know about me, it was revelation that took me off. How come your business succeeding? Revelation. You got married at that late age? Revelation. The cancer could not kill you? Revelation. You got pregnant? That's why the PCS? Revelation, sir. Sabanana. Praise God. The tool that God used to increase is revelation. Go for revelation so I can see increase. The second tool that God used to change levels is encounters. That's why we are fasting and praying. We are not fasting and praying because the church said so. Everybody has a deep desire. I'm going to 22. Help me, Lord, to go naked. As a businessman, empower me. As a single lady, empower me. As a married man, empower me. God to Adelish. It's encounters, encounters, encounters. God uses encounters to change people's life. Peter was a fisherman. When he saw a man that fish respond to, he knelt down. He said, behold, I'm a sinner. <laughs> the world needs to see something happen in your life. That they will kneel down your office and say, pastor, pray. Is that say, I don't know you're a pastor. Ah, as you said it, he said, that's your family. They, they come to their knees. The same doctor that saw cancer will say, we can't see anything there again. The same people that say you can't get married, you give them invitation card. And it's not a what man or woman, no. It's correct. They say, how did you do it? The same people that say they tied your womb, you give them baby and say, carry. They say, you're not even afraid. They say, I cannot be afraid. If despite your time, you could not stop the baby. The baby is here now. Can you kill it? Never. But what does that is encounter? Encounter. Revelations of verse 1. 
Oh, let's look at that. See what Paul said. What John said. Revelation 4 1. How did Paul go up? Paul said, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard went of a trumpet. What did the voice say? The voice says, Come up, Tina. He said, When you are it's too shallow, come up. Ah, your finance is too low, come up. He said, This job is too low, come up. He said, Come up. There's space at the top, sir. He said, Come up, Tina. Come up, Tina. Come up, Tina. Ah, this was one day we are taking this serious. Because we must hear that word that said, Come up, Tina. We must hear that word that said, Come up, Tina. Your robot song says, It's a let you sue me. Ah, ah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come up, Tida. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Lord, I'm devoted to revelation. I devote myself to it. Spirit of God, expand me. Take me to the next level. Ah, Lord, I don't, I don't want to be where I used to be. I want to be right where I need to be. Stand on your feet, let us pray.